All right, folks, we're back with some more Nintendo Switch 2 stuff we need to talk about. This is stuff coming from a special source out there that has some known connections, and I can't wait to dive into it because it deals with potentially what the gimmick is going to be for Nintendo Switch 2, which I think a lot of you guys are going to be very interested in. Also, the idea that Nintendo may indeed be launching with two models of the Nintendo Switch 2 and what that second model is and why this model would exist. So we have a lot to talk about here, but before we dive too deep in, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 150 thousand subscribers so i would really appreciate if you would drop a like subscribe to the channel comment down below and you know what ring a ling that ding a ling so you're notified of all of our latest videos especially talking about nintendo switch 2 but there'll be other topics along the way as well now that being said let's get into this because well we got to talk about a person who i i I know him. He, he goes by Special Nick Online. He is one of the hosts of the Xbox Era podcast, and he's got various connections around the industry, including some with studios very close to Nintendo. Can't really give more information than that because obviously, you know, you don't want to out his sources. But on his latest Xbox Era podcast, they talk about an entire section of rumors. And yes, they dealt with a lot of Xbox rumors, but also any other rumors they have heard from pretty much their own sources on anything else. And Special Nick went into some stuff that he has heard about Nintendo Switch, including Nintendo Switch 2, including something that was from a while ago, but seems more relevant given the recent reports, and then something brand new. So first, let's dive into the thing that he's talked about in the past that he has heard that now he feels even more confident is going to happen, and that is an all digital Nintendo Switch 2. Now, this isn't ignoring the fact that we already heard from reports that there is going to be a physical cartridge slot. I firmly believe that to be the case. But he does note that this might be actually true, specifically because there could be a 512 gigabyte version of Switch 2, which is a lot of internal storage. And he's suggesting when you have that much internal storage, it's entirely feasible that there could be a digital only version. And he's not speculating that there will be. He's actually heard a rumor on this some time ago that it's going to happen. So it's really cool when you think about this idea that Nintendo could launch with two models, one that allows physical games, one that allows digital. It probably should have been a conversation point we've already had at this point because the Xbox did it, right? They have the Xbox Series X and then the Xbox Series S, which is not only a weaker system, but also all digital. And now we're hearing rumors out there about an all digital Xbox Series X coming out. So like they're going all in with that all digital stuff. And then you obviously have PlayStation with the PlayStation 5 and then the PlayStation 5 all digital and a hundred dollar price difference. So it shouldn't be too surprising that Nintendo would look into this. Also, Nintendo's digital sales continue to climb, and there's clearly a ton of Nintendo Switch owners that are all digital right now. So why not offer them an all digital version of the system at maybe a slightly discounted price? Now, the thing is, the cartridge reader slot isn't that expensive in the first place. So how would they do this? I don't know. Maybe this all digital thing is actually meant for, say, a Switch to Lite that's going to come later. This is just a rumor he heard is going to happen. But maybe at launch there will be two versions. Maybe we get a, you know, four hundred dollar Switch, you know, two. That's the base Switch two, and then we have the base Switch two all digital that maybe comes in at three fifty or something like that. I'm not suspecting a hundred dollar price difference like the PlayStation Five, but that could appeal to people who maybe have no plans of buying physically. So why spend the extra fifty bucks? And then for the rest of us. We probably would just buy it so we have the option to do either or. So I'm just throwing that out there as this is something he has said, but that is not where the rumor train stops when it comes to Special Nick because he actually has heard something that might be about the potential gimmick for this system or at least a feature on this system that isn't necessarily present with other stuff. Now to note, he does not tell us exactly what the feature is because he is very worried that if he just outright said it, people would get fired and lose their jobs. Uh, so he doesn't want to go that deep, but he does give hints that give us something to speculate on. And he says this thing is almost PlayStation like 
Exact quote. Like something PlayStation has done or has looked into in the past. Now, when I think about this, there's a few things that come up that are really Sony's sort of bread and butter and not necessarily Xbox or Nintendo's. One of those, and I think this is probably the most obvious, is PlayStation VR. It also helps that we have patents from Nintendo over the years for various VR stuff. So we know Nintendo's been looking into VR. Now, I don't, wouldn't want VR to be this thing that you pack in with the Nintendo Switch 2. If they treat it like PlayStation VR where it's an accessory that's optional, that, to me, would probably be the best route to go. But it is something that people have talked about where VR could be a thing. And that would obviously be very much a Sony thing because Xbox hasn't done any sort of VR headset. Now, that's just one possibility. It could be a lot of different things. Like, we could dive into this one. Hey, the DualSense controller with its haptic feedback or, I'm sorry, haptic triggers and the way that their, their stuff works, it is one of the best controllers when it comes to immersing you into games and just the feeling like it, it makes HD rumble look like a toy. This is one of those things where I would love to see Nintendo take advantage of this. Now, it would require a thicker controller. You couldn't have it as thin as the Joy-Cons, but also people want thicker controllers anyways because it's more ergonomic. So if they go with a thicker, you know, Joy-Con-like controller with a Joy-Con 2, they potentially could put things like haptic triggers in or, you know, some really, really advanced rumble features that make HD rumble look like garbage. That would be really nice to see that that's what Nintendo's doing when they're like, hey, yeah, we have a Nintendo Switch 2 with more power and more this and more that. Also, by the way, now you can really feel like you're in the game by haptic and feedback and all that. That would be what I would prefer Nintendo would do, although clearly it might feel too copy-paste to PlayStation. Of course, so could VR. Then again, Nintendo's VR wouldn't require like a separate $400 headset, I assume. So there is that. Now... The other thing they might do, and this has to do with games and services. So for those who aren't aware, Xbox has recently closed their Xbox game with gold and kind of merged it into an ecosystem called Xbox Core. And they've got various tiers that lead all the way up to the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And what they have, have been doing for a long time is offering games with gold, which is where you get free games every month and as long as you download the games in that window you do get to keep them and keep playing them but as of this month of august 2023 that is now a discontinued service they are no longer offering games with gold obviously that is because they want to push people hey you want free games head on over and just get that subscription to game pass so when i say free it's all relative because you're paying for a service so it was just sort of part of your service but PlayStation actually doubled down on this service when they announced their new versions of PlayStation Plus. And we don't need to go through the various tiers of PlayStation Plus and what you get. But what is important is they are doubling down on the fact that they're going to continue to offer free games, quote unquote free games, through PlayStation Plus every single month. And in those free game services, they do offer some of their biggest titles. As an example, they can have like The Last of Us come out and they've actually put that on PlayStation Plus at one point that you could just download for free as long as you downloaded it that month, you get to keep it. So this is like a temporary window to download free games. And it would be interesting if that's actually what Nintendo is going for, where they're like, hey, on Nintendo Switch 2, we're expanding the Nintendo Switch Online expansion to include free monthly games. And they could work with indie studios, they could work with third parties, and naturally some of the stuff they could start to include is some of that back catalog on Switch, especially if, well, hey, the, the system's backwards compatible. Obviously, we all want it to be backwards compatible, but that actually is a great transition to our next story because this actually comes from the Take-Two CEO, and we're going to read this right off of GoNintendo.com because, man, oh, man, does this look utterly amazing. So the Take-Two CEO comments on whether Switch's successors should have backwards compatibility. And naturally, we've already heard the stories about third parties. You know, oh, man, we don't want this thing to have backwards compatibility. It's going to hurt our sales. Well, let's hear what the CEO of a major company bringing Red Dead Redemption over and his comments on Red Dead Redemption will briefly mention because uh, I, I just have to say he thinks it's priced correctly. He basically thinks it's going to sell at the price that it sells. And he argues including that zombie stuff is, is, is why. I don't know. It is what it is. But let's see what he actually had to say 
uh, down here in the quotes. It says, you need to give consumers what they want and optimize their experience. And you can't not deliver a feature you're able to deliver so as to maximize sales. That isn't fulfilling your contract with consumers. You have to do the very best you can for them. I suppose it's possible the lack of backward co compatibility could enhance your revenue for a period of time, but at what cost? We're not hardware manufacturers, so we don't get to make those decisions. But I think if you can be compatible technically, then you want to be. However, in certain instances, if the leap forward is great enough, that's not a possibility. Now, it's entirely possible or even likely Take-Two already has a dev kit and might already know the answer to this, but they're under NDA. They can't say anything. But they, you know, the CEO seems to be acutely aware of what the conversation has been, where there's been a lot of, man, Nintendo might not actually do this. That is insane. And he just goes, we agree. Like, when it comes to consumers, look, we might be greedy with what we're doing at Red Dead Redemption, but the bottom line is, why wouldn't you want to offer a value to your consumers that actually could increase sales long haul? And I do agree that if you don't have backwards compatibility on Nintendo Switch 2, what you're really saying is you're worried about short-term gains over long-term profits. So I do think that there is a lot of viability and reasoning for Nintendo to continue to have backwards compatibility. And to me, one of the largest arguments to keep backwards compatibility really has to do with <laughs> evergreen sales of Switch games. You can continue to sell those Switch games over and over and over again if they're compatible with Switch 2. Yeah, you can release new versions, but also why not You know, still continue to keep the evergreen Switch games evergreen? I don't know. It just feels like a thing that they should do. Now, that's really what we got for you today on this really you know, enjoyable video. We're going to have much more to talk about tonight on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. We're going to go into this stuff here. We're going to go into actually some new news out there for Metroid Prime 4. If you don't catch the podcast tonight, we'll have a video tomorrow on that stuff as well because we're still fleshing out all of the details and what, how we're exactly going to frame this. But yeah, we're going to talk about at least what we've heard so far about Metroid Prime 4 on the podcast tonight, along with Switch 2 stuff, along with Pokemon. Pokemon Presents, eh, whatever. And we'll be actually taking on some of your questions tonight on the Nintendo Prime Podcast at 8 p.m. Central Time. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you the full lineup for the podcast right now. I'm actually looking over at the list over here. We have Paul Gale Network coming on, heavily connected person in the industry. We have Andres Restart, of course, one of our regulars. We have uh, FVLAM Flam coming back on. We have Nick Barrett, a.k.a. Nick with no K. Also... We have Nintendo Talk coming back on. So it's going to end up being a really amazing show. I can't wait to see what these guys have to think about all of these various topics. And you know what, guys? I'm going to catch you guys tonight on that Nintendo Prime podcast. <laughs>